you're online looking for your attainable dream car, cursing the fact you only have $80 in your checking, then you see it. The car you've always wanted for thousands less than anything you've seen so far. You read the ad, it looks legit. But before you call the number, you see it. You see it, right? In somehow smaller than everything else font, at the very bottom of the listing, salvage title. Big thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this episode. If you're not familiar, Bespoke Post is a monthly subscription service that sends you boxes packed with unique, high quality goods tailored to your style. You can choose from many different box options, like the Speakeasy box, so you can impress your friends with your cocktail making abilities. There are seriously so many different box options that you can choose from, and they have new boxes each month. If you're not into what they have to offer, you can always make a custom Bespoke Post box that's perfect for you. I'm super pumped for the Weekender box they sent me. Let's see what I got. Little Weekender bag there. I'm the most handsome boy at Donut now that I've got this bag. I also got some granola bars for some reason. <laughs> and a Damascus steel knife. It's got a wooden handle and looks like little brass dowels to hold the handle on. It comes with a nice little leather sheath here. But the best part about Bespoke Post is the value. For only $45 a month, you get a custom Bespoke Post box with over $70 worth of high quality goods delivered straight to your door. So support the companies that support Donut. Thank you, Bespoke Post, for hooking me up with some cool ass gear. Salvage title. Those two words change everything. What once looked like an incredible deal now feels like a nightmare gamble from heck. But are salvage title cars really that bad? Is buying one right for you? First, what even is a salvage title? Well, when a car is involved in an accident, the insurance provider decides whether or not it's worth it to repair the car. If the repairs quoted cost more than the car is worth, the car is totaled. The insurer will pay off the owner and take possession of the car's title. The insurance company now has a junk car on their hands and needs to make some money back. So they sell the car to a shop or individual who intends to get the car driving again. The shop repairs the car and lists it for sale. But to protect buyers from unknowingly buying a car that was totaled at some point, the car's clean title is stripped and in its place, it's given a salvage title brand. Depending on the state, Salvage title doesn't just mean collision damage. A car can get a salvage title a few different ways. Fire damage, flood damage, stolen and recovered cars can be salvage titles. I know all that sounds scary, but there are a few positive sides to buying a salvage title car. The first is cost. Like I mentioned at the top, salvage title cars are usually thousands of dollars cheaper than cars with clean titles. The seller bought the car at a discount from the insurance company and the savings are passed down to you. Here are a few salvage title cars I found that I think are pretty good deals. How about a 2013 Challenger RT for 13 grand? That's about five grand less than typical. Here's a 2017 Civic for 10 and a half grand. That's a pretty good deal. And I got a bargain for you. This 2014 McLaren MP412C convertible with 4,000 miles for a discount rack price of $115,000. Okay, that's not the best example. This McLaren isn't even a good deal either. Advertised at about 5,000 less than typical. But hey, they'll deliver it to your door for free. I'm sold. Examples like these prove that the deals are out there. But unfortunately, it's not always that easy. Look, I won't bull you. There are a lot more cons to buying a salvage title car than there are positives. First, you won't always know what caused the salvage title status. Some states like California require the seller to disclose the salvage title status and vehicle history. That's great, but other states don't require that second part. That means you can't be 100% certain what the damage is, which can make future repairs a major P in the A. The second drawback is that once a car earns that salvage title, it can never get rid of it. Some state DMVs will inspect salvage cars and deem them roadworthy with a rebuilt title. But that still means the car was a salvage at some point. And again, you won't be sure what gave it that status in the first place. Don't mistake a rebuilt title for a clean title because it's not. This adds another headache on top, getting insurance. For obvious reasons, insurance companies won't make it easy to insure a salvaged car. Some just won't do it. Some will charge you out the butt. And honestly, why wouldn't they? If you get in another accident, how can they know what damage is new and what was caused by a previous hit? They can't, that's just the facts. Also, one more thing you should know is that when you buy a salvage car, you should plan on keeping it for a while. It's really hard to sell them. 
Dealers do not consider these cars worth their time, they won't give you any trade-in value on one, and private buyers will probably be scared. So just keep that in mind. And those are just the negatives of knowingly buying a salvage title vehicle. Some people aren't honest and will try to sell you a car without telling you it's been wrecked. Accidentally buying a salvage title car happens more than we should be comfortable with because of a practice called title washing. Here's how it works. Let's say a car gets totaled from flood damage and earns a flood damage brand. A fraudulent seller might bring the car to another state that doesn't issue flood damage brands, gets a new title for the car, and voila, the flooded out car now has a clean title. Different states have different standards for considering a car total. As of 2014, Mississippi had the highest rate of title washing with one in every 44 cars falling victim. One in 44! And Ohio had the lowest, with one in every 2,170. Go Bucks! If you think a car you're looking at might be a secret salvage title vehicle, here's what to look for. Signs of major repair in the inner fender structures. That would be from a collision. Mud, mold, or rust under the trunk carpet. That means the car was in a flood. If the VIN is attached to the car with anything other than rivets, that's just sketchy AF and you should run immediately. If the safety restraint light, which looks like this, is on, that means the car might have been in an accident where the airbags didn't deploy. And finally, if the NHTSA stickers in the door, hood, tailgate, and hatch are missing, then those pieces have probably been replaced because it was probably in an accident. Look, I know I just listed a lot of negatives, but I don't want you to think that all salvage title cars are bad because from all the research I've done, I don't think they are. In my Googling, I found a network of professional repair shops whose entire business revolves around bringing wrecked cars back to life correctly. I'll admit, before this episode, I didn't know shops like that existed. Let me tell you something. These people defend the hell out of their handiwork. Just look at some of these comments. My husband has been rebuilding cars for more than 20 years. I only drive cars he has rebuilt. I don't even own a car because I slash we drive his builds to make sure they are in optimal condition before we sell them. I mean, if this dude's wife is willingly driving his cars, she trusts him a lot and trusts the car. Then there's this one. Don't buy a wrecked car, but if you purchase from a known rebuilder whose work quality can be verified, these rebuilt cars are just as safe as any car on the road since they are rebuilt to factory specs. Gotta love an endorsement for buying a salvage car that starts off by saying not to buy one. I wanted this video to be a guide for people like me who don't have a lot of cash and wanna buy something cool. But what I found was a lot of people going ham in the comments of salvage title car articles. I didn't know it, but salvage titles are contentious as frick. There are people who say to never buy a salvage title car, ever. Then people right below them who swear by theirs and only drive salvage cars. It's a madhouse everywhere you look. It's probably happening right now in the comments of this video. Scotty Kilmer is probably down there somewhere. Run up your engine. People who run salvage car repair shops are tired of bad sellers who give these cars a bad name. I hate the bad rap these cars have gotten due to people who try to rebuild the irreparable or throw junk together just to make a dollar, says Donna Clark. I'm with you, Donna. Reading that made me wonder if I've been too hard on these cars in the past. If we all have. All right, if you wanna buy a salvage title car, here's what you do. Ask the seller to provide repair records so you have the full picture of the car's history. Use a car history service as well, like Carfax. Have the car inspected by a trusted mechanic, like you would any other used car. They can do a full inspection and point out any major flaws. Finally, find out how long it's been since the salvage title was issued, and if the car has been driven since then. If the car was totaled years ago, but has been driven a lot, the repairs were probably enough to make it roadworthy. But I will admit there is some uncertainty if the accident was more recent. In the end, I think salvage titles are still a bit of a gamble. But what we've learned here is that there are some good deals out there. Pair that with knowing what to look for in these cars, it's a gamble that looks a little bit more appealing. Just do your research, have the car looked at by a professional, and for the love of Pete, do not bother with a flood car. It's not worth your time. Do you like dealing with electrical stuff? Yeah, thought so. Me neither. Don't do it. Remember when in like the 90s everyone was named Cameron? Finally got my attainable dream car, Civic Type R, championship white. Thanks to all your support that I was able to buy this thing. So thank you guys very much. Uh, this is a dream come true. Uh, a little smaller than I thought. Listen, right. if you keep making those milk jokes, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. Be nice. See you next time.